I'm going to be doing question one from the 2005 AP Calculus test. And this question says, let f and g be the functions given by f of x equals 1 plus sine of 2x and g of x equals e to the x over 2. Let r be the shaded region in the first quadrant enclosed by the graphs of f and g shown in the figure above. So part a asks us to find the area of r. And we know that to find the area, that the function is integral from a to b of the top function minus the bottom function. So if we look at the graph they gave, we can tell that the top function is f of x and the bottom function is g of x. So a is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. So let's put these functions into our calculator in order to find the limits a and b. So y1 will be f of x, which is 1 plus sine of 2x. And y2 will be e to the x over 2. Let's graph those and take a look at what that says. And we know that the lower limit a is at 0 because both of those functions cross through the um, y-axis, so we know the lower limit is 0 already by just looking at the graph they gave. So we can put that in as a is 0. Uh, the graph is pretty zoomed out, so let's zoom in and find our upper limit b. So now that it's graphed, we'll use a calculation function and use intersect. Select our first curve and our second curve. And at this point of an intersection, we have an x value of 1.136, and that will be our b value. So now we have everything that we need to know, and we can plug it into our calculator. So f of x is 1 plus sine of 2x so let's go ahead and plug this equation into our calculator using math 9 and we will get the value of the area of r And this gives us area is equal to 0 0.429 units squared. So that's how you do part A. Okay, part B asks us to find the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved around the x-axis. And when we look at the graph that they gave us, we can tell that if this shape is rotated around the x-axis, that there's going to be a hole in the middle. So we're going to have to use the disk method of finding, <coughs> of finding, oh, I'm sorry, the washer method of finding the volume of this figure. So for part B, we know that um, the equation for this is pi times integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared dx. And we know big R is equal to the top function minus the bottom function. And little r is also equal to the top function minus the bottom function. So when we look at the graph, we can see that the top function is f of x, and the bottom function is going to be the x-axis. So r is equal to 1 plus sine of 2x minus 0. And little r, when we look at the graph, the top function of little r will be g of x, so e to the x over 2 minus 0. 
And the lower and upper limits are going to be the same as from part one, since we're still working with the same region R rotated about the x-axis. So let's plug all of our numbers in and see what we should put in the calculator. So now we have all the values, so let's go ahead and use math9 and plug it into our calculator and see what it gives us for the volume. Don't forget to multiply that by pi <clears throat> in order to get the correct answer and we end up with the volume equaling 4.267 units squared or units cubed, sorry. Okay, so for part C, it says the region R is the base of a solid. For this solid, the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles with diameters extending from y equals f of x to y equals g of x. We need to find the volume of this solid. So, for part C, let's go ahead and write down the basic um, equation we need to use to find the volume. And we know that since we're using semicircles, as a cross section, we know that the volume will be equal to the integral from A to B of the volume of a semicircle, and we know that the volume of a semicircle is pi r squared all over 2 dx. So we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit by taking pi over 2 out and putting it on the outside of the integral, so V equals pi over 2 times Okay, so now let's go back and look at what the problem said. And we know from the um, instructions in part C that the diameter extends from f of x to g of x. So by that we can conclude that the diameter is equal to f of x minus g of x. And we know that the diameter is equal to half of the radius. So the radius is going to be equal to f of x minus g of x divided by 2. So now we have all the values that we need to plug this back into the um, first equation, or I guess the more simplified equation. And then we can put that into our calculator and find the value of the volume. So and the limits are still going to be the same as from in part a and b, so the lower limit is zero and the upper limit is <clears throat> going to be 1.136 and the radius is f of x minus g of x over 2 and f of x is 1 plus sine of 2x and g of x is e to the x over 2 So now we have all the parts plugged into the equation, we can go ahead and use the math9 function again to find the volume. So Once we plug this portion of it in, we can then multiply that by pi over 2, and that will be our final answer for the volume. So we get that the volume is equal to 0 
seven units cubed. Which will be our final answer for part C of the 2005 AP Calculus test question number one.